Hi, my name is Philip Chandel, and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to AI and neural networks in dermatology. Neural networks, you would say, is a brand new technique, but truly, dermatologists have been researching on that method already two decades ago. For example, if you go back to 2002, Rubegn and co-workers extracted handcrafted features, such as colors and geometries, from images of nemite melanoma and fed them into a neural network. What they would do is, is take a feature, feature, multiply it by a weighting factor, sum them together, and then force the resulting value to be between 0 and 1 by a sigmoid function. By that, by only giving features, they would get a probability between 0 and 100% if something is a melanoma or not. This sounds very complicated, but really it is just e times x is y, 13 times and summed. Now, they train in over 500 nevi melanomas, but what does the word training in that regard really mean? Well, they take the feature of every training image and then try to alter these weighting factors, which are just numbers, so that the resulting uh, number at the end would reflect an, a zero if it's a nevus and a one or 100% if it's a melanoma. Then at the end of training, they freeze these numbers to fixed values and use them on the, on the testing images. In their case, that worked quite well with an accuracy of 94%. Now, if that worked so well, why is it not present in clinical practice, you might ask? And one reason is that it's a bit cumbersome to use it. For that method to work, you would actually have to manually extract the features used and then enter those features to a neural network model. What would be more desirable is that you just give the image to your neural network model and get a prediction out of it. Now, how would that work? Uh, and it does work today. I'll give you a brief intuition about how um, more advanced neural networks would do that. If you take the network from before, this can be regarded as a single perceptron or a neuron, if you will. So it takes in images and gives you an output. So you can combine these single neurons to a more complex network. In this regard, a multi-layered perceptron. On the very left, you have the input layer you would give in your image or your raw pixels. It's then followed by so-called hidden layers. They're only, only called hidden because you don't actually look at them during training and testing, but you do know which numbers are in there. And at the very end, you have the output layer, which gives you the probabilities of a certain diagnosis. And whenever you have a multitude of these layers, you could call a network a deep neural network, and thus the term deep learning. Now, for everyday um, performance, it's a bit more complicated. For example, you need something called convolutional filters, but this is the scope is out of the scope of this short tutorial. Additionally, um, well-performing networks don't only have um, like 11 neurons as are depicted here schematically, but actually have hundreds of thousands or even millions of parameters that need to be trained. And for this high number of parameters, 500 images as from the study before are not sufficient. You actually need tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of images. If you go to today, and look at a very current publication by Han and co-workers. They used about 170,000 clinical images for training purposes. Their network after training was able to predict between 12 different disease classes and not just melanoma, not melanoma. Still, if you look only at the melanoma performance on their test cases, it got an area under the curve about 0.96. This is, a, this is very good and if you look at the test cases which originated from a different database than their own, it decreased vastly to 0.88.
this is still a very good value in my view, but it gives you intuition on that the model performance depends very much on how diverse your training images are and that it's very hard to generalize such a model that it will also work on images from other parts of the world. Thankfully, these authors offer the val their model to the public through modeldurn.com. Here you can upload an image and get an actual prediction from their trained network. Beware though, they state every image you upload, they will return in their databases for further research use. Now as you see, this works for clinical images, but what about dermatoscopy today? And one of the problems is that we don't have like 170,000 images present for training today. The most advanced archive today is the ISIC archive, and it has about 14,000 images available today. And the ISIC archive is hosting challenges in the last years for machine learning um, research groups to actually program neural networks that can predict dermatoscopic images um, well. For example, from 2016, they trained to distinguish melanoma to not melanoma. And these are results of the single algorithms shown as curves compared to dermatologists shown as shapes. Here you can see that the shapes are still a bit better than the algorithms. But a nice technique you can use for neural networks is you can combine their predictions to a so-called meta model that is more than just the sum of its parts. That's what's shown here on the right, where you can see that these combined meta models perform as well or even better than dermatologists. Remember, these results are for detecting melanoma between and not melanoma. So these networks would only know melanoma nevi and a fraction of SIP case or soul lentigos. That reflects that in the ISIC archive today, you would only have uh, about these three disease classes, but very little examples of others. But just as humans can only see what they know, that's even more true for neural networks. They can only see and only can predict what they have been seeing in the training phase. And it's very hard to add an additional class, for example, a pigmented BCC class to an already trained network, but rather you have to go back and do everything from scratch. So it is key that in your training data, you would have most or almost all of these disease classes you would need in the future and very diverse image data. And this is the goal of this year's ISIC challenge where the Medical University of Vienna and Cliff Rosendahl from the University of Queensland and Australia teamed up to provide a data set of 10,000 images with at least 100 examples of pigmented skin lesion classes. We hope that with this new data set, the new trained algorithms will be more able to detect every kind of pigmented skin lesions in dermatoscopy in the future.